So no shit, there I was, knee deep in blood and guts and sand in the middle of South Baghdad on December 31st, 2007. Just kidding. But I was in a Humvee uh, driving down Route Emily, uh, passing a Husania on our left. Uh, the same Husania we have passed a hundred times on different convoy missions through South Baghdad with uh, the United States military. Anyway, on that night at about 10 o'clock, uh, we were driving down the road, and I'll never forget, I turned back to a new lieutenant. Uh, who had just gotten into the country about a month ago, and I said, uh, hey, sir, I bet you didn't think you'd be spending New Year's like this. And I remember he laughed, and then at that moment, bam, there was this flash. came out of my left, and I remember seeing this bright light and all this stuff come shooting at my face just really, really fast. And I remember seeing it, and I remember seeing it slow down, and I remember the actual thought. I remember thinking, close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes. And when I did, I remember thinking, too late. And then I felt all this stuff come rushing past my face. And I remember being so thankful. Security glasses we were forced to wear. And then after it was over, I remember I felt pain in my left hand. I felt pain on my left hip. But for the most part, I felt okay. I remember being surprised. I remember thinking it must not have been that big of an IED because I, you know, I checked my legs, I checked my knees. Uh, I had a little sweat in my lower back. I wondered if that was blood. Uh, I remember there was blood on my, the front of my body. And then I started, then I started to feel this really powerful sensation in my middle, my midsection. If you're uh, if you're a guy, then you know what it feels like to get hit in the groin really, really hard. Well, what had happened to me, I found out later, was that when the EFP blew through the truck, it blew through the engine block, and it sent all this stuff back at us, and a piece of shrapnel, uh, well, the, a piece of the steering column got blown into my groin. And... Um, it was, it was uh, you know, there was a lot of jokes made in the medevac, but uh, ultimately I was, um, you know, saved from any long-lasting or deformative harm, and everything's good to go, tried and true. Uh, but that night was very, remem very memorable because when I was back at the cash getting checked out, uh, that's the back at the rear hospital getting checked out, um, the stroke of midnight happened. And midnight, the very first moments of 2007, I was on a operating table with a medic on my right, uh, with his arm around me and both of us in uh, Happy New Year's hats, and a doctor uh, ultrasounding uh, my important parts. And in the picture, me and the medic are going like this, and the doctor's kind of looking at me like, or looking at the camera like, you guys crazy? But that was my uh, closest, closest experience to death. And when I came back to our base three days later and was able to look at the truck, uh, what I realized is that, you know, if we had gone one mile per hour slower, or if we had left our base one second sooner, if the guy that set off the bomb had done it one second later, everyone in my truck would have been toast. It was a very powerful EFP, and the, the main body of it went straight through the engine block. I mean, it was that far in front of me. And it was just one of those experiences that if you've been overseas and been in a combat zone, you know when it's your time, it's your time, and when it's not, it's not.